that was my complaint when I was running is Alabama is the most conservative state in the country. We should be having people like Ted Cruz lead us. Like we should be the state where we can get a real intelligent person who is an articulate educator about conservatism and about what Republicans actually think instead of a freak show. OK, I'm sick of Alabama having a freak show. And this this was just embarrassing. Transgenic mother of sin, the adorable, the plorable. Republicans are helpless. Honestly, this is why I try to do what I do. I try to educate these dopes. <clears throat> I should be thanked. Okay, the only thing to talk about this weekend is the disaster that was Katie Britt's State of the Union response. I don't think this really matters long term. The State of the Union response for both parties is always kind of a way to test out new blood, try new thing, try things out. And I did say in a previous video, I thought it was a good move to try somebody new. As I said, I'll say again, I think the Republican Party desperately needs to get new faces in front of their party. They need to get the senile leaders out, but replacing them with, with whatever that was, uh, not a good move. And again, just to, just to justify my position, I mean, this is why I ran. I ran four years ago for Senate. I mean, I try to beat these people. The, so hopefully now people at least see what, what I was attempting to do. I mean, here's these are this is this is what we're stuck with in Alabama. People don't understand this about the Alabama Republican Party. The Al the Republican Party in Alabama is is full of half insane people. I used to go when I was running. I used to go to like the those events, like the the country club women of this local area region event, and that's what they're like. They they like that kind of thing. They like the they like the acting. You could say, I mean. When I was trying to run, I was trying to run as an authentic person. That did, They didn't like that. They don't like that here in Alabama. I think that's a Southern thing. I think that I think one of the things that you're seeing here is, and I did not expect this when I moved to Alabama. I thought when I moved to Alabama, I thought the Republicans here would be like Texas. I thought it would be like um, real liberty. You live as you want to live and people embrace freedom. That's not what it's like. What it's like in Alabama is it's like a religious cult that's in power, and they're very influential and mean about making their will be expressed. That's my interpretation on the Alabama Republican Party, and they like weird shit. They like fake stuff. Again, like if you were to just see some of the speeches that I saw, that's the, that's the political style here. Is they get in front of the audience and then they put on this fake persona and then they like perform. So I think that's a Southern thing. And I think I think Alabama really needs to fix that. I mean, the people who advise her should be fired immediately. I said on my Twitter, if you're looking for uh, I don't think this I don't think this is probably a, this is not a career ending thing. As long as you're willing to keep going into the arena and, and keep debating. I mean, she could get better at this. I've never met her personally, so I can't I can't get a gauge on her intelligence level. But I offered like if you if you want better advice on how to appeal to broader Americans that are actually Republican, uh, you should get rid of those people who are advising you right now. I mean, they told her to go in the kitchen. <laughs> I need to make some kind of a comic about that. I was trying to tweet to give them advice. One of the things I said was, I said, you need to show calm and maternal side of the GOP because people are very afraid. I think people are afraid. Some people are afraid of Trump, not not conservatives, but I think some moderates might be afraid of Trump. And so my thought was, you need to portray calmness, um, the calm and maternal sort of other side of the Republican Party. And they put her in the kitchen. They put her in the kitchen, and then when, as soon as I watch it, I couldn't even watch it. I could not watch more than five seconds because the clip that I played was the most outrageously, flamboyantly acted out portrayal of some absur absurd vision of what uh, an Alabama Republican woman should be. Again, I think that's a Southern thing. I think they learned that in the sororities. 
I don't know if this is true, but I would bet Katie Britt was in a sorority. I wonder if this is Googleable. Yeah, Katie Britt was uh, in the student government, and she was a Chi Omega member. What's the Chi Omega? Again, I don't know. I don't want to get in trouble for not showing accurate information. Yeah, she was a sorority member. So, so what? Okay, so so she was a member of Chi Omega. Katie, I'm telling you, you need to call me. I'll give you actually like good advice. This is a shit that they learn in the sororities here. It's like that. If you walk around on the Auburn campus or on University of Alabama, the sororities here have a lot of power in the student government. And people who come up through those systems, they learn how to put on this fake persona. And I do think that's a very Southern thing. The Southern women are expected to um, behave in that way. And that's taught to them in the universities through their culture. So they go through, when they do rush period, they go through this period where they're competing to get into the best sororities. And so you, they have to do these competitions where the only way to get in is to have some kind of a fake persona because that's what they value here. They value, it seems like the women here value the ability to fake reality and smile when things are not okay or, or bring up a tear when they need to cry. Whereas it's not like that in the North. So again, I'm from Minnesota. I spent born and raised in Minnesota. I spent three years in Connecticut. So I have most of my life experience is from the North in colder environments. And most of the people that I was around with are like, again, Minnesota is heavily founded by German Scandinavian people. I feel like what we value up North is like reality, being able to look at somebody and know what they're about and know have a true sense of what that person thinks. I think that's what's valued in the North, especially in the North Republican Party. In the South, it's not like that. At least here in like Deep South, like Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana. Again, I don't know what, probably a little bit different in Texas, but here it seems like they're selecting for this ability to to be deceptive. They need to drop, she needs to drop that immediately. If she ever wants to have a future, I some people are saying this is a career end for her, which Maybe that'd be good for me because then maybe I can primary against her. Again, like if, if, if you want to do yourself a favor, uh, you need to fire every single one of those people who watched that video and told you that that was good. She probably also doesn't have many people around her who will tell no. Again, like it's hard for me to know. I, what I'm curious is, was it her idea? Like, was it her idea to be like, yes, I'm going to do it in the kitchen and I'm going to. I'm going to really play up the emotion. I'm going to pull up the tear. I'm going to cry about this particular rape. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know. She really needs better decision makers. And the Alabama Republicans need to move much more towards intelligent liberty. That was my complaint when I was running. Is Alabama is the most conservative state in the country. We should be having people like Ted Cruz lead us. Like we should be the state where we can get a real intelligent person who is an articulate educator about conservatism and about what Republicans actually think instead of a freak show. Okay, I'm sick of Alabama having a freak show. And this this was just embarrassing because, again, like I said, this was like a good idea in that I thought it's a good idea to put new faces in front of the Republican Party. And clearly, like, maybe that's a mistake. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's a mistake because maybe most of the Republicans are just fucking insane. Maybe they need to be much more careful about who they put out. After this, I tweeted, I was like, okay, the only people who should be making Republican responses are Molly Hemingway and Vivek and Rand. Like, just make Rand Paul, Vivek, and Molly Hemingway the official mouthpieces of the party. They're the only fucking people who can make competent articulations of what we actually believe. This was just insanity. It's just sad. It just makes me sad. And this is just, a, again, like all these idiots in the Republican Party are just making us look so stupid. Like the Supreme Court that did the IVF thing. So the IVF thing, there's no Republican that is against IVF. OK, that's a that's a reflection of the religious cult that is in power here in Alabama. There's obviously religious cult people who are elected to the Supreme Court, and they're so dumb that they make decisions that outrule IVF because they believe that when the sperm fertilizes the egg, that creates a human. 
Now, again, like I like I'm a Republican, so I sympathize with people who have that belief. But you have to have a little bit of pragmatism in that we want more babies. So you can't you can't make judgments that make IVF outlawed. They're, that's their problem. It's a religious cult here, and there's no pragmatism. So the IVF thing, the whole IVF debacle, and it, I like to just say, say again, I mean, this is why I ran. This is why I ran. It's because we want we want intelligent people leading us, not complete morons. And that's what we have in Alabama. We have religious cult leaders that are leading us who are complete morons. And it's very difficult to get them out because they control the entire Republican Party. You don't get any support. You don't get any traction. The news articles won't even cover you. So imagine if you were a normal citizen and you wanted to like run against this stuff and you wanted to say, well, we should get a normal citizen, an intelligent person in office. You try to run. The machine won't support you. That's what happened with me when I tried to run is I could not get a single article written about me. The entire political news infrastructure is monopolized and they control who they want to rise up to the top. Okay. And I can guarantee you that Katie was probably one of these people who was picked by that machine. Again, like, I don't, I don't, I never met her. I never, I don't, I'm, I'd like, maybe we should have, a, I'd like to have a conversation. So I don't, I don't have anything horrible against her, but I'm just so sick of being represented by idiots. And that's why I tried to run. Okay. Other stuff that Republicans are doing. They're pushing this Lake and Riley story real hard where Lake and Riley was this student from Georgia who was murdered by an illegal. I understand why Republicans are doing this. I think they need to be careful. So the the um, the persuasion tactic that they're using here is fear. Like fear is the most powerful persuader. So they're trying to associate like the open border with fear. Which I do think there's a legitimate cause for fear there. We don't know who's coming in. I think that's real. But the way that they do it, where they're like, say her name, say her name, you know, like Marjorie Taylor Greene is doing this. And I actually kind of like Marjorie Taylor Greene. But I think what they need to be careful about is, yes, they're using fear. So in theory, that should work. But they're also doing something else where they're innately associating themselves with murder. So it's kind of like it's kind of like if you were campaigning and you walked around and you just kept saying murder, 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 that's going to turn people off. People are not going to like that. That's not very optimistic. So I think they need to be a little bit more careful. I think they should tone that stuff down. Uh, you, you might get the opposite effect where you might get some kind of a bizarre association where then people just subconsciously associate you with Lake and Riley's murder if you keep talking about Lake and Riley's murder. Yeah. So I think they need to be careful about that. I would like to see an optimistic vision, a cause for optimism. That's what I want to see. Not craziness. Okay. I don't know. Lots of sad thoughts. I debated making this video. But on the other hand, you know, this is a direct reflection of what I've been trying to fight against. So, you know, we need to get these people out. We need to have people who are intelligent in charge. Final things in the news. Bill Ackman investing in Bitcoin. Bitcoin's up right now, 70000 I think that Bitcoin's going to hit 300000 Bill Ackman decided to go in on the Bitcoin. I got, I read one of his tweets. His tweet was something like, "Okay, he finally understood the loop that that Bitcoin will Bitcoin will essentially just keep going up." And he was kind of making a joke like, hmm, "Maybe it'll go to infinity. I guess I better buy some Bitcoin." <laughs> and when you first learn about this kind of like Bitcoin loop, um, you game it out and you realize, okay, well, if Bitcoin he just keeps going up, it's going to require more and more computational power to mine. So we're just going to infinitely create computers that mine Bitcoin? Like, that might be a waste of power. That's what that's what uh, Bill Ackman was tweeting about. I don't think that will actually happen. I think that Bitcoin has a finite price structure eventually. Like, I don't think it, it can't it can infinitely go up. Maybe? That's an interesting question. Like, can Bitcoin just infinitely go up? I can't infinitely exponentially go up. So at some point, it's going to hit a curve. When all the Bitcoin is mined, that curve of price will love off because there won't be any more Bitcoin left to mine. And then the miners will then just be essentially what will happen at that point. I think it's like a hundred years from now or 20 years from now. I I think it's actually like 80, 80 to a hundred years from now. Check me on that. But I think it's about 80 or a hundred years from now when all the Bitcoin is finally completely mined. When that happens, the structure of the miners will switch to 
managing the transactions. So actually the computational power required to main, maintain Bitcoin will not necessarily grow infinitely. And I also think the what what what's really interesting about this is what Bitcoin selects for is more computational power. So this is what you're seeing with the NVIDIA chips is NVIDIA actually, even before the explosion in AI, NVIDIA was starting to get rich from making chips that they gave to Bitcoin miners. So Bitcoin actually selects for increased computational power. I do think so, this is something Satoshi probably understood is Bitcoin was probably a, a sub motive of Bitcoin was to increase society's computational ability. And that the, if the money system is structured around compute power, that will select for increased compute power. And so as compute power increases, um, that would curve off or level off the explosive growth of Bitcoin's cost. So it can't, it can't infinitely grow forever. Eventually that, but it is, it is going to be in an exponential phase for the next few years is my suspicion. I think Bitcoin's going to go to 300,000. Michael Saylor thinks it's going to eventually go to a million. If it goes to a million, I don't see why it doesn't go higher. Everything that I understand about the system makes me agree with that. Don't take, don't take my advice, but you might want to get some Bitcoin. All right. That's it for this Saturday. Hopefully you enjoyed the show. SNL put Scarlett, Scarlett Johansson in the skit making fun of Katie Britt. <laughs> this makes me want to run again. This makes me want to just, come on, these people are ripe to be beaten. We could have better leaders. Katie, if you really want to do well, you need to call me. Call Dr. B. I will help you. I will advise you. I can help you how to do better than whoever those fools are that told you to do that. Trust me. You really got to trust me. All right. Have a good day. are no more.